Six to two Yankees. Incredible, powerful swing of Aaron Judge. All six, seven of them. Got that feeling. And now, here's Rob Dibble. Uh, we knew Aaron Judge would eventually hit the ball into fair territory, and he did. He hit it over the wall, but it's excruciating to watch Cleveland in game one and game two of the ALCS. First inning, Bybee's on the mound. You pop Judge up. That ball's got to be caught. He drops it. Uh, leads to the first run. Um, then then Bybee's having trouble you know, finding the plate. It's cold. Uh, a lot of it, to me, is, okay, you, you also play in cold weather. You're right by a lake in Cleveland, so you're often uh, pitching in cold weather. So that shouldn't be an issue. What should be an issue as well and shouldn't be an issue is it's always windy in Cleveland. It's windy in New York. Um, you, you know, you have to go out and occasionally take infield and outfield. Um, I, I, I was on some radio shows today, and I liken this to football. And I know you would love this analogy. How would you like it if a kicker didn't kick before the game? Right. Didn't right. kick one extra point. Didn't kick a field goal from forty yards, and just went out there and tried to make them during the game, and then missed, and then missed. Right. Okay, right. you'd flip out. Well, that's exactly what I'm watching in baseball the last ten years. Nobody wants to take infield. Nobody wants to take live balls off the bat. The pitchers don't even shag anymore. So when these guys don't make defensive plays that college players should make, minor league players should regularly make. This is the best two teams in the American League left now. Okay? Best two teams in the National League. This is the ALCS. When you are have five wild pitches and pass balls, when you walk seven guys, you are you can't expect to win those games. So even last night, as poorly as they played, getting your bullpen in the game that early, even and you had Cole on the ropes, you got to be able to put Cole away. You had Cole on the ropes. You couldn't put him away. Again, nobody to blame but yourself. So the, the Yankees... When they had to, executed. When the Guardians needed to, they could not. And that's the difference right now. Is you got one team, trouble catching the ball, trouble throwing strikes. Um, bullpen is going to be taxed. They need this off day to travel, get back to Cleveland. But really, I don't see this going more than four or five games. Um, when, when Judge is the weaker hitter and Jazz Chisholm in your lineup, they will catch fire. It might be game three. It might be game four. Those guys know how to hit. But right now, Stanton's hitting 300. Uh, Soto's hitting 350. Verdugo's getting timely doubles. Volpe's getting on base. Rizzo's getting hits. When when most of your lineup is clicking, and maybe Austin Wells is another guy like Jazz Chisholm, they will hit. Um, I, 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 I look at the Guardians like you're already beaten. Because unless something drastic happens in Game 3, if you lose Game 3, you're down 3 nothing. Nobody comes back from 3 nothing other than maybe 2004 Red Sox, uh, which is not – it's an absolute miracle when that happens. But I, I just think that the, the Yankees, you had them where you wanted them. You could have split this series, gone home for three. You had Cole on the ropes. Cole didn't look sharp from the get-go. And, and you failed to execute and, and get that guy out of the game. He did come out in the fifth inning. But it wasn't soon enough, and you were only able to scratch out enough runs to stay in the game, uh, but not not come back and win that game. Yeah, so. I agree that like there's a lot more free passes. Again, seven walks once again that backs up from game one as well. Two errors on top of the you know not just the drop in the middle of the infield, and you only lose by three runs, and you are not hitting. Like J Ram has gotten a hold of a bunch of balls that have been right to people. Um, there's been some rockets from other guys that are right to people, uh, but you got to tip your cap to the bottom of the order more than anything, and even Glaber Torres. Glaber Torres, a three-for-five yep. night, really setting the table okay, in the and, leadoff and spot. Look at his at-bats, though. He's not swinging like old Glaber. Right. He is swinging like a leadoff guy uh, like Kenny Lofton used to swing. Or, or you know, God, when I was growing up, Rod Carew off the fingertips, smacking the ball the other way. He's hitting like we've wanted him to hit for five years. And all of a sudden, he's not sitting there imposing on some home run ridiculous swing. So he's letting the power guys do the power. He's right. getting on base and, and setting the table. So kudos to that guy. He knows how important he is this series. Scored two runs as well. But the 7 8 9, man, Anthony Volpe, Anthony Rizzo, and then Verdugo. Like, yep. for most of the time, that just seeing those three names there and what we've known of those guys, like Rizzo and Verdugo, are a little bit different now than they once were. Uh, but when you go 5 for 10 at the bottom of your order, 
quarter. I don't care what the names are. That is no. awesome. Awesome. In a playoff setting and games that you need everything. And you like you're saying, your best are not producing to the point of, you know, a home run every single at bat and Jazz Chisholm getting on base and he can't be stopped to score a run. Right. When that's not happening and you're getting Glaber Torres, who's always been an issue at the plate, and you're seven, eight, nine producing and I throw Glaber in there. That's uh, eight for fifteen. Uh, let me jump in here too. The the Yankees did a couple of ho- a horrible base running blunders in one half inning. I was going to say they Yankees- did two in the same half inning. If you're not going to, you know, when they make mistakes and you don't capitalize on that ridiculousness, shame on you. That's your that's your fault. And I think Vaught knew that early. He's like, I'm not going to repeat what we did in game right. one. Yeah. I'm going to go right to my bullpen and then people are getting on him for that. Listen, I've got eight guys down there. I've got, I have to, if I have to bring my closer in, in the second or one of my best setup men in the second. And honestly, he came in and he did a very nice job, uh, you know, of coming in behind him. Smith, um, did a nice job. He, he almost went two innings, no runs, couple of strikeouts, no walks. You know, but you you had to bring in your best guys to try to hold on because you needed that. Get that was a must win for the the Guardians. Um, it was a great win for the Yankees because now you go in with some house money, and even if you lose game three, you're still up two to one with two to play in in Cleveland. But even for the Yankees fans, they should be happy moving forward being up 2-0. I don't want to take anything away from that. They are in the driver's seat. Pressure is on Cleveland right now. But as you were saying, with the base running blunders, plus the infield was not sharp. I mean, Volpe and Jazz, I think, are still working out, playing third and short next to each other. There was a couple of balls, like the swinging bunts are getting through every single time against the New York Yankees. And with Cole on only going four and a third, they still have used but a who lot they of bring pitchers in? as well. They brought in their Clay closer Holmes right away. first half of the season, right Clay away. Holmes. They brought him in the fifth inning because they knew we don't shut this rally down right now. We've got a game on our hands. And so you bring in your closer when you need him. Then you get it all the way down. Weaver, again, he, he gave up a run late in the game. Again, eventually he's going to give it up. And people are going to be like, oh, my God. But, yeah, you run him out there every game. He's a young kid. Um, the, the guardians are going to maybe see him four or five times in the series. So don't, don't expect him not to give it up. It may happen, but you brought your closer in to save the game in the fifth inning, just like the Cubs did back in what? 16. When you were bringing Araldis Chapman in the fifth and sixth inning, right. sometimes games are won and lost in the middle innings. And you were talking yesterday, we were talking about the start of Cole, and you're like, need a string of hold on this series, and they definitely got that. Yeah. Now, I'm not trying to take anything away from that, throw all the stats, all the errors, everything away. The only two that really matter are wins yeah. and losses, and right oh, yeah. now the Yankees are in the driver's seat. Back to New York for more baseball tonight and an even more crucial game in Major League Baseball. Game three, I'm as you excited. were saying, very yeah. important for Cleveland. Obviously, very important tonight for the New York Mets and or the Los Angeles Dodgers. I'm excited as well. Well, you were talking about Louis, L- Louis Severino off yeah. the air. This guy has not pitched well in the last month of the season no. when you needed him to pitch well. This is one of the reasons why the Yankees didn't feel they could count on this guy going towards the postseason in meaningful games. And so when you look at Severino, that that's my issue with Severino. His last five starts... Um, we're suspect and you need this guy to nail down 15, 18 outs. It looks like we're going after this is absurd to think we're looking to try to get 12 outs out of our starter. If we get four innings and then turn over the last five innings to our bullpen, we're, we're thinking we're sitting pretty. Right. And that's, that's to me shocking. Um, but that's the formula right now in 2024 analytics says, Bring the bullpen in early in these postseason games. Now, these numbers may be a little skewed when you just look at them because most guys are getting lifted in the fourth inning if things get out of hand. I think a couple of these losses, maybe things were out of hand and they were just using Luis to eat up some innings, but he did go through six against the Phillies in the 7-6 loss. He does a lot of work to get these outs, man. He did get seven strikeouts, but getting up two long balls, three earned runs. Yep. Uh, and yeah, all, that was all the runs that no, were there. His last five starts, at again, least three runs, at least well, three runs. I look at the home runs more than anything. You're getting the ball up in the zone. They're Six. getting underneath it. Six home runs and five starts. Uh, was it 12, 20, uh, 22, 28 innings. So, I, I mean, like one, every three innings, one, every four innings, you're giving up a home run. Listen, he, this guy has great stuff, great stuff, but you know what? He, the second time through the order, he'll start nibbling. Second time over. Yep. He'll start nibbling. Yep. He'll fall behind and then have to throw 95. Guys can, that guys can easily hit 95. Stan's hitting 95 right now. The, these guys right now, they know these are the most critical at-bats of my career. I'm not missing anything. 
So they're locked in. It's funny when, you know, you hear Aaron, but, well, you know, Stan gets more. Why didn't he get him locked in the last six months? Because he knows the postseason is is what makes your legend, is what what, what people remember you by. He's going to be remind, remembered as a slugger, hit a ton of home runs, but if he doesn't win a championship, nobody's going to care about John Carlos Stanton. Judge, the, the thing I read today, Judge, he's got all these records. He's just looking for the ring. Duh. Everybody wants a ring because that's your crowning achievement unless you go into the Hall of Fame, which a lot of these guys are not going to. Um, he wants to win that championship. So these guys now, everything is like the next 20 at-bats in their lifetime. You know, these guys are totally focused. And just bringing back the 7-6 loss Luis Severino started in the Philly series. He did have a great five innings. I mean, he gets through the first order and a little bit through the second time around. And all of a sudden, as soon as they've seen him enough, I think this could be third at bat, Bryce Harper homers. And then right behind him, uh, Nick Castellanos. And that's when Severino gets lifted. By the way, news there, Nick Castellanos. He got rid of Scott Boris as his agent today. He will represent himself. Really? Well, he's got a lot of kookaroos to fall back. He's got Moxie. Moxie. And he's got Moxie. He's got Moxie. We love Moxie. Got the kid. He could bring his kid in with him. Maybe his kid negotiates the new deal. All right. Dodgers side. Walker Bueller is going to be starting for them. Um, They have really used their bullpen. And we were talking about this yesterday of how they're going to try to piece it together. They need Walker Bueller to eat up some outs, at least go four for them to set the table for the rest of the work. If they, if they have the lead at that point. Um, But I, I would Put my eyes more on Bueller than I would Severino because I, I just think the Mets have more options right now than the Los Angeles they Dodgers do. on the and, and I agree with you that you and you have a good long starter that was excellent, Peterson, in your bullpen that could go three innings for you for the Mets. Uh, Dodgers do right. not have a guy like that. So um, sad news there, too. Um, from Mexico, one of the best baseball players I played against, Fernando Valenzuela. He is ill. He is not going to be able to broadcast the rest of the postseason. Oh, no. Uh, so he took a leave of absence today. So just wanted to throw that out there. But Bueller is only going five innings anyway. If you look at these guys, whether it's Yamamoto, who was going four or five in his last five starts, uh, Bueller hit six uh, only one time in the last five starts, and that was in the middle of September. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's he had five walks in that game, by the way. Dodgers showing you an all-star team came back, won that game nine to two easily. Uh, San Diego, some of these other teams. Listen, he gave up six runs in one game. Uh, they barely lose six to five. He gave up four runs in another. They lose six to three. If he can hold it to under like three runs for five innings, I think it's going to be tough on the Mets because the Dodgers are going to score the runs. You, you have to realize. In, in my brain, I was always brought up to and. Uh, it, most of our starters had ERAs in the mid threes, upper threes. If we could score four or five runs, and honestly, Pete Rose used to preach this, Lou, we get four or five runs tonight, guys. We got a good shot to win this game. I agree. I agree because then the bullpen from the, the sixth inning on should be able to hold on to a one run lead, two run lead if we can get the lead. And I think if the Mets can get the lead early, keep the fans in the game, it makes it tougher on the Dodgers. And then you start panicking, you're like, Dave Roberts, well, should we lift Bueller here, which really favors you because now you're into their bullpen. The quicker the Mets could get into the Dodgers' bullpen, that will favor them for the rest of the series. Now, the Dodgers, if you remember in this San Diego Padres game, this is the game that he blows up in the second inning. Mm-hmm. Walker Bueller, that is. This is the game that Tatis Jr. has the big home run, yeah. and then Walker Bueller goes back to the dugout and body slams the trash can. Now, he got back out there. He thought that was going to be it. Trash can won, by the way. Yeah, trash can always wins. Tay Oscar <laughs> Hernandez with the, <laughs> the grand slam that made it that one run ball game. No runs were scored after that. But he did come back after a very shaky second inning. That was a lot of his demise, but also his team helped out with those six runs that were put on the board on him. I'm just saying that's his last you know, time out. You know what also happened? Thieves stole his hundred thousand dollar watch. Oh, They're I still remember. looking for that gang of watch stealing thieves. And that was at home. Good thing he's going to New York City where they're a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be a great game tonight. Um, game three, it's a primetime game, so a full show here on the Rob Noble Show. It starts at around 7.30. I'm excited. Um, I can't I'm wait. excited. We'll for- also have game three of the WNBA Finals. Oh, by the tonight. way, yeah, gosh, oh, the way. and are we in... Oh, we're in Minnesota. I'm just seeing all the stuff that's happening in New York City right now. I mean, with the Yankees What, what do we go, 2-2-1 two, two, in the WNBA? Yes, 2-2-1. Two, two, so game five will be back in New York City. But, you know, the hockey's going on right now. Heck, the Knicks are playing preseason games as well as the Brooklyn Nets. 
Uh, I think everybody won but the Jets. Yep. Everybody's doing great but the Jets. I don't know. They got Devontae Adams. I think that's a win. They won the headlines again, yeah. Kurt. That's yeah, what they're it's good all about. Tuesday. That's what is <laughs> they're so great. Tuesday and Wednesday. They're the best. <laughs> That Sunday stuff. Yeah, we're either gonna we're gonna trade for a guy, we might fire a guy, but you know we're gonna make sure we get the headlines. Yeah, and they win it. But tonight, game three, it's a tied series, one apiece. Uh, the first game, it was a great overtime win. Courtney Williams with a big bucket at the end, big uh, uh, foul four point Stewie, play at the end Stewie as well. The lamp. And then Stewie got revenge game two. Um, so there, it's going to be a fun night in Minnesota as well. But New York City sports fans. By the way, National Sports Day today in the United States of America. And it just feels like New Isn't York day? New York Sports yeah. Week this week uh, for our friends there in the Big Apple. But they've got a lot to cheer for. I'm happy for Mets fans. I'm I mean, listen, I think the Yankees are going to win the ALCS. But I was asked this question today. I'll put it to you. Would you rather have the Dodgers-Yankees or Mets-Yankees? I know. Just being here, Mets-Yankees for sure. I, was I mean, selfishly, we We'd like the Subway Series, but I think nationally everybody wants the Dodgers. One thing that I don't like, I'm such an underdog fan. I know my Cubs spend some money, but still, they're an underdog to me. Your Reds spend no money. They're an underdog. Dodgers, Mets, Yankees, they spend more money than everybody, and here they are. They're the last you know, three out of the four standing. I, mean, I don't think anybody wants Dodgers Guardians. No or one Mets wants star Guardians. Mets Guardians, I think, is the worst for either, Major League either Baseball. National League team for Major League Baseball. Play the Guardians. I would love good. it. I would love it. I love all the cast of characters on both of those teams, but I know the you Major the League broadcasters, man, they so want the Yankees to win. I think the umps do too. I was watching some ball with some Yankees fans last night, and they were even pointing out some of these calls or Wow, they got that one. They really got that one for the Yankees. And we noticed this. There was a punch out. I forget who it was. It was one of Cole's jams that he gets a strike out in the end, and we go to the I dugout. Think I recall this. And this is high and nope. outside, nope. and it misses the square. And everybody, I guess you guys saw it as well. Everybody I was watching with was like, whoa. And then we go to commercial. And then every even Yankees fans were like, well, we're going to see that pitch when we come back. Never saw it. Nope. Never played a replay. And that even the Yankees Well, when fans, it's questionable, you're not going to see the replay. Yeah, we got to protect them umps. A- MLB yeah, owns okay. the national TV contract, so you're like, we're not going to show up MLB and the umpires. Not going to happen. Same thing in the NFL. We, we're not going to light up the referees and, and, you know, we'll even bring in a referee to oh, kind of, totally. I love that. So the, the, the former referee will come in and be like, well, you know, I kind of agree with what the referee said down the field. Mm-hmm. I could have said that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I would love it when they're like, no, that guy is absolutely wrong. That, that should be overturned. Whatever. I, I wish the, you know, the refs that they do hire to do the analysis were like, yeah, that was completely wrong, but the only reason it's not going to get overturned is because the league wants this, and they probably rang that red phone I'm not supposed to tell you about. <laughs> sure. What that happened was... tonight? This is completely BS. This is shame. So true. It is. <laughs> it's not like we're in a conspiracies, but you, you, having worked at Fox for so so long and listening to um, my boss out there, he, was, he always dreamed every postseason of Dodgers-Yankees. Dodgers, Yankees, best for TV. For sure. Not great for the fans, but best for TV. That was Darko, right? Coach Darko. He's still coaching for the Raptors this year, right? We need some Darko in our lives. He is the only one that's on our side. He is the only one that will come out and say it. Shame. We don't have any Stephen Vaught from last night. He wasn't ripping his team. Like, we forgot to bring our gloves to New York. I haven't seen him really rip his team at all. Like, even when the Bo Naylor stuff was going on in game one and we had five wild pitches slash pass balls. Like, I did not see him get animated about it. And I, I'm when waiting for Josh PO, Naylor. When do. he went to get by B in the second inning, he was not happy. I think Josh Naylor is going to choke some people in the dugout if they don't start hitting. Josh is doing his job. He's doing his job. That's big boy run, 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 run <laughs> first, too. But Josh doing his job. Right. I, would, I thought if anybody's going to get it, Bo Naylor. Josh Naylor is going to get it, Bo Naylor. I guarantee you already did. I guarantee that down the, down the alleyway, he was like, "Dude, you got to stop those balls. You get, you got to get up off that knee and stop those balls, or it's take that ridiculous. name off the back of your jersey. Yeah, embarrassing us, baby brother. Mm-mm-mm. Bop you upside your head." Dibs, what about the Wells stance? The way he does the one knee, I still don't like it. It's not as it's not they as bad. They all do it, Kurt. They all do it. Um, but stretching I, I the leg out, I don't have a yeah, problem with nobody on base. Great. But but the you know Agreed. some some guys do splits. Some guys get down really low. I mean Yadier Molina was one of the greatest. I mean he was like 
I grew up watching the Tony Pena's, uh, p- played with Benito Santiago, Sandy Almar Pena Jr. Was they, only, with, only with the bases empty. Only, only with the bases empty because your first thought is, I can't allow a guy to second because now he's in scoring position. God forbid you don't want to have a pass ball. Now the guy walks a third or walks from third to home. I always want to prevent that action. So as, as a catcher, I don't know why you've gone from defensive to offensive to this whole framing up yeah. thing. I don't mind right. the framing up. Frame it any way you can to get me a strike here and there. But when it costs us a run or a base, that's when I lose my mind. I, I just don't understand that they don't say, like, get up off your knees when there's guys on base. That's a great point. Shame. Shame. <laughs> so much shame out there. First two games in New York, shame on the Guardians. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll see what Dom Amore has seen, what he saw from the UConn men's basketball. We'll also talk about uh, what's coming up this weekend. It's another noon start, man. How are we supposed to tailgate against Wake Forest? Can't push that thing back? All right, we'll talk to Dom Amore from the Hartford Current next.